As you know already, the blood vessels and blood cells arise from the mesoderm. These are the derivatives of the mesoderm, and these blood vessels will be developed in two ways. That is called vasculogenesis and angiogenesis. So there are two ways by which the blood and blood vessels can develop. vasculogenesis and angiogenesis vasculogenesis means vessels arise from blood islands in the mesoderm angiogenesis which entails sprouting from the existing vessel angiogenesis which requires sprouting, uh, sprouting from the existing vessels so vasculogenesis is that that there will be the mesoderm cells and there will be the formation of the blood island in the mesoderm and from these blood island there will be the development of the blood cells and the blood vessels but angiogenesis is the sprouting from the existing vessels vessels are developed and from there there will be the development of the new vessels now come to the how blood islands develop first they will appear in the mesoderm surrounding the wall of the yolk sac so this is the yolk sac yolk sac and this is the wall of the yolk sac and mesoderm surrounding the wall of the yolk sac there will be the appearance of the blood islands at the three third week of development at the age of 3 weeks of development slightly later the uh, the blood islands will appear in the lateral plate mesoderm and then other regions you can see uh here in the trophoblast too that blood islands are present in the trophoblast so the sequence of events is that that first they will appear in the mesoderm surrounding the yolk sac then second they will appear in the lateral plate mesoderm and then in all other regions where the vessels have to be developed so first blood island appears in at the age of 3 weeks of development in the mesoderm surrounding the wall of the yolk sac now how the blood vessels and blood cells are going to develop from the blood island in the mesodermal cells so first take the blood island arise from the mesodermal cells so these blood island these arise from the mesoderm cells it is already told you and these blood island will be induced by fibroblast growth factor 2 these blood islands will be induced by the fibroblast growth factor to produce hemangioblast hemangioblast so first step is blood islands arise from mesodermal cells these blood islands are induced by the fibroblast growth factor to form the hemangioblast hemangioblast this hemangioblast as you know is the common precursor for vessels and blood cell 
formation. So blood vessel as well as the blood cells, they are going to develop from the hemangioma. This is the common precursor. So here, there will be the development of the blood vessels and here you can see the blood cells. Common precursor is the hemangioblast. After that, when hemangioblasts are formed in the mesodermal cells, there will be the formation of the angioblast at the periphery. Peripheral area, it is occupied by the angioblast. Hemangioblast will form the, will develop into angioblast. Angioblast will form the endothelial cells. These endothelial cells will join each other to form the blood vessels and it is induced by the vascular endothelial growth factor. So this vascular endothelial growth factor will induce the angioblast to form the endothelial cells and then will induce the endothelial cells to join each other to form the blood vessels. Clear? So angioblasts are present at the periphery. So as we want to form a circular tube. So which hemangioblasts are present in the center? They will form the hematopoietic stem cell. And these hematopoietic, hematopoietic stem cells. So they will form all types of blood cells. So I will repeat it that blood islands will be formed in the mesoderm. They will form hemangioblasts. Hemangioblasts at the periphery will be the form angioblasts to form the blood vessels. And the hemangioblasts in the center will form the hematopoietic stem cells to develop into the all types of the blood cells. Then come to the angiogenesis, the second method for the formation of the blood vessels. This is, this requires the sprouting of new vessels from the existing vessels. Once the process of vasculogenesis establishes a primary vascular bed, we need it first. Angiogenesis cannot come into action before vasculogenesis as we need the primary vascular bed for angiogenesis. Once vasculogenesis is established, then angiogenesis will come to play its role. So, we need a primary vascular bed for the angiogenesis. Additional vasculature is now added by the angiogenesis, the sprouting of the new vessel. This process is also mediated by vascular endothelial growth factor. As you know, within uh, vasculogenesis, angioblasts will form the vessel by the induction of the vascular endothelial growth factor. Here again, angiogenesis is also mediated by the vascular endothelial growth factor which stimulates HERCI, which stimulates proliferation. Proliferation of endothelial cells at points where new vessels are to be formed. We want to form a new vas vessel at the, from the primary vascular bed. So, it will cause proliferation at that point and this proliferation will lead to the formation of the blood vessels. But this proliferation is also mediated by the vascular endothelial growth factor. So we have to memorize only the vascular endothelial growth factor for the vessels formation. So this is all about the angiogenesis. Two procedures that vasculogenesis, this is vasculogenesis and after the vasculogenesis 
the sprouting of new vessels is by the angiogenesis. Then come to the maturation and modeling of the vasculature. Maturation and modeling of the vasculature. It, it needs for its mediation platelet derived growth factor. We need platelet derived growth factor. And number two, we need transforming growth factor. So, maturation and modeling, modeling of vessels will occur under the influence of the platelet derived growth factor and transforming growth factor beta until the adult pattern is established. So, when there is the formation of the vessels by the vasculogenesis and angiogenesis, then, then next step is the maturation and modeling until the adult pattern is established. So, main points, first blood cells arise in the blood islands of the geophag. Blood cells, I am talking about the blood cells, not the blood vessels. We have completed the blood vessels. So, first blood cells arise in the blood island of the geophag. Here you can see hematopoietic stem cells in the center. These hematopoietic cells uh, stem cells are derived from the hemangioblast. Then they will form all types of the blood cells. So, these blood, first blood cells will arise in the blood islands of the geophag. Number two, the definitive hematopoietic stem cells arise from the zooderm around the, surrounding the uh, aorta in a site called the aorta gonad mesonephros region or AGM. These cells will colonize the liver. Definitive. Definitive hematopoietic stem cells arise from Mesoderm surrounding the aorta in a site called the aorta gonad mesonephros region (AGM). These cells will colonize the liver, which becomes the major hematopoietic organ of the fetus. Then, later stem cells from the liver will colonize the bone marrow, the definitive blood-forming tissue. So, coming to the first blood cells. They will arise in the shock sac. It is temporary. Then number two is the definitive hematopoietic stem cells which will arise in the mesoderm surrounding the aorta in a site called the AGM. These cells will colonize the liver which becomes the major hematopoietic organ of the fetus. Then stem cells from the liver will colonize the bone marrow, the definitive blood forming tissue in adults. So, this is all about the development of the blood cells and blood vessels. Now, today 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39 and 40 roll number will make the assignment of this lecture. Thank you. Allah Hafiz.